will resume our meeting. 5.38. Originally, we had called the meeting to order at 4.20, and we had taken a field trip, and we are back. So this is the public hearing um, following the inspection of the Upper Gilead Brook Road um, section that we visited. So any... So we should tell uh, Brook Road. So since uh, you didn't come, um, Andrew, we stopped at Sedgwick, so we were turning around, he just came out with a four-wheeler. He said he didn't have any issues and <clears throat> with it, and um, that was really the, the gist of it. He didn't remember it ever being really maintained much, but of course he's younger than you, so you might remember more, but he didn't have anything to say about the road itself. We saw Jeff Townsend on the way up, and well, you saw him too on the way down, so. Um, no one, and I did hear from Phil Rogers. Um, his kids are the names on the property. I couldn't figure out what the deal was. So, but I talked to him, sent him a class four road policy. Uh, Mr. Sedgwick got the notice, but didn't say much. I assume he was, whatever, okay. And uh, I figured you would have, you know, probably if anything, you'd spoken to him. And, and uh, so that was really it, you know, that's, that's just you guys. But I, did, I didn't know until today that Andrew paid for the culvert and put a better culvert in where your access is, or a bigger culvert. I didn't know that. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, so I just wanted you to know because you weren't there. So at this point, the the conversation is it, currently the Upper Gilead portion is a Class Three, not up to standards, and this is uh, 0.46 miles of the end of. Gilead Road, and the conversation was to um, potentially uh, reclassify it as a Class 4 road. Um, there had been some maintenance that had just recently went on there that probably mm -hmm. hasn't been done in 40 or so years. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Ever. not sure. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So right. it's, um, you know, better than it has been. Um, there's, you know, yeah. there's still some issues on it. A little bit of drainage on some areas where we can't discharge the water due to getting on to a, you know, getting property. And this, um, yeah, we need to talk about this too um, as part of yeah. the. So we had, um, just like any of the, anytime we talk about roads and reclassifying of roads, the, the estimate cost per mile to upgrade a, a road like Upper Gilead to get it to more of a class three type style road, which isn't just, you know, including drainage and thickness of sub base, but it's also widening that road because that road is, you know, only nine, 10 feet wide. Um, you know, a typical class three road that we have in a lot of spots is 15, 16 feet or, mm -hmm. or greater. So, and, and the challenge <coughs> of that road is actually the width of the road. So to build yeah. that road out wider, there's lots of things that would have to be done. There's ledge to be removed, there'd be trees to be removed, so that's where kind of the cost really comes up on that. Um, so the, the cost per mile um, was $225,000 to do that. Now this is less than a half a mile, so you know, the you know, approximate cost on that's you know, a little over $100,000 to you know, kind of get it up to what a class three standard would be. Um, uh, on a piece of roadway like that, so. Uh, and then what we just did up there with Jeff, Jeff was, uh, you know, close to $30,000 with the work. Um, yeah. Some of it was um, repairing some of the flood activity that happened there, and the other parts of it was up upgrading some of the sub base and, and a little bit of the ditching that hadn't been done on, on that road, so. And I think he, might have done some more clearing. Did he do some more? Did he remove some more brush by your entrance? Uh, yes. Yeah, a little bit of so. yeah. yeah. I feel like it's more visible now. He did. He opened yeah. that up. Quickly. So that when you come out, you're not going to be concerned about seeing like jeeps mm -hmm. and having bicyclists or whatever right on top of you. And the elevation's a little higher. It used to come out down into the hole. Now it comes out pretty high. That's nice if, if it stays. Mm -hmm. I'll be surprised if it does. But. Um, it's hard because you take so much runoff from the field. You know, water runs downhill. It, you know, 
We have people who are build houses below the road and then they're wondering why it's like, you know, what are you gonna do? But yeah, if any of the runoff can be managed off on the field, it'd be nice. But hopefully it stays. And uh, yeah, new culvert, so that's, and a bigger culvert, so that's nice. So was that town material that he used on the road? Some of that new stuff that we have now, it says? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Matt, he bid on it to bring it in. Because we put, I <clears throat> had a bid out, so, um, mm -hmm. for that, so he was a little bitter, but. Does the board have any questions? Yeah. Brian. If not, then I'll open it up to mm -hmm. Brian, if you're the only participant here. <laughs> well, I'm really surprised that it was, I mean, I think everybody was surprised it wasn't a class four anyway, you know, three or four years ago. Yeah, I don't, I was surprised that when, I don't know why Bethel didn't do something when Rochester. They discontinued their side, I guess. Right? It's it's not a four, is it? It's a, so I was so I did I wasn't sure. I was surprised in a way that Bethel didn't do something because they would have known it would have left. And I'm surprised Mr. Sedgwick didn't make a bigger stink. They knew they were leaving a resident stranded out there. I think it was I think Rochester did theirs according to Frank Severy way back in the. 40s or 50s. Oh, really? Oh, I thought it was more recent. No, I asked him. Oh. I can double check, but I think it was way back. No, then I be, I'm, that's fine. I believe you. I just couldn't feel, I thought it was weird that Bethel wouldn't have followed suit, but that makes sense now. So, huh? Mm. But. Cool. Any comments from the board or? No, I'm good to go. So I, I guess at this point, if, if the board is comfortable with it, you know, just need a motion to uh, a motion to reclassify the 0.46 mile upper portion of the Gilead Road from Class Three, not up to standards, to Class Four. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And you know, you might want to jump around maybe because... Um, do you want to wait to the... Do we want to hold? Well, with um, Brian here, do you want to bump to the Class 4? Do you have anybody else coming today for the Class 4 Road Committee? As far as I know. So, okay. you want to just bump to Brian? Yeah, That's good. Easy. Everybody good with doing the Class 4? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so I... first. Yeah, so Brian had sent pictures mm -hmm. of his sign in she and um, so did did uh, what's the guy's name from Royalton did he make it no, no. He said he was be away during that time anyway but he said he had somebody that he hoped would be there but nobody showed up just the, just the four of us so is this the Bethel yeah. everybody from Bethel yeah. so none of the select board members and I, I went down. you went down are you I on the list didn't make the D the day that they were there, but I went down and oh. looked it over. <clears throat> I couldn't we do it. We went down as far as where that uh, granite marker is, you know, the town line. Pretty good, you know, um, you can pick out the road down through oh, there. Okay. For sure, no question about it. Yeah, that's what, that's what uh, Alex was saying too. Yeah, Alex came over here after a little bit wet. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was wet. <laughs> yeah, because he was going to walk down further. He, was gonna, he did. He had to check a culvert for uh, for the snowmobile club. Yeah, um, yeah, he did. Side, yeah. yeah. So when oh. you were, I see you said overall condition was fair, but you said it uh, doesn't look like ditches are needed, no drainage or runoff noticed. And I will say I have been following very closely that Tumbridge issue myself. Every time I see an article in the paper, I follow it because I'm really, I'm interested to see how that comes out. Funny is Mike Tarrant is defending Tumbridge. And uh, I, I, I'll be interested to see the way that sugars out because it's pretty interesting. I think it's gonna set a precedent really. Oh, dang too. In the, in yeah. the whole state with, because nobody knows what a, what a legal trail is anyway, can you? Can you snowmobile? Can you snowmobile but not four wheel? Can you, you know? Probably. And the statute to me makes it sound like the town has no authority over it once you make it a legal trail. So, but they passed a policy about it. And I'm like, oh, so I'll be interested to see what the Supreme Court has to say about that, the Vermont Supreme Court. Yeah, 
saying that they don't have any say over the town. Yeah, but if you look at the statute, it's vague. There's no statute. About trails, there's a, there's a crappy definition. It just says uh, uh, legal trails will normally be used for recreational, yeah. recreational purposes only. So what's recreation? Is that yeah. jeeping? Is it, is it just horseback riding? Is it just walking? Is Exa it, right. And, that, and that's what they're going to find out again. The town finally said, you know, we're done dealing with it. We're going to, the only way to settle it is to take it to court, mm -hmm. Tunbridge, you know, so they directed their town crew to go out and the land, I guess there was some trees across the trail. The landowner told them, you don't touch them or you, you know, because you have no authority to clear the trails out. So. And he's a professor at the law school, yeah. the so landowner. Is it? No, I'm just so saying, anyway. so I can see this. I know it was going to go all the way. I yeah. Think. So anyway, the town said, you know, we might as well settle it and get it done with. Yeah, exactly. You so, need a statute on it, really, to, do. so you can afford it. You know, it. I've had representatives tell me, well, we paint with a broad brush, the legislature. I'm like, it doesn't do us any good. Well, you and know? the interesting thing, I don't know if, I don't know if Alex, I don't know if Alex told you, but he, a few weeks before we did the walk down there, he stopped in the town clerk's office down to Royalton, and yeah. she didn't know anything about this trail or anything about um, yeah, because it's or... the planning commission that was doing it. Yeah. So I was surprised when Geo came. He was from the planning commission. I thought, well, this is a little odd, but I don't know how they run Royalton's yeah. or the planning commission. But so I was glad you guys got a peek at it, and you said you're going to do Thayer. You're going to start doing some research on that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you going So right on. now the committee's um, recommendation was just to leave it. Right. Leave it the way it is. Let's see how maybe Tunbridge and things like that turn out. And then mm -hmm. maybe. You know, we figured if they want, you know, they want to make a walking trail, they can, they can do it now. They can use it as a trail now if they want to, you know. So right now, so how many landowners do we have in Bethel that there's just one landowner just that's involved, on that? Just the Deans, I think. Just right. Deans is the only one? Yeah. Yeah. Did they come out when you were going down there? The deans? The deans? Yeah. Yeah, Gary came out and uh, he didn't know anything about it. I don't know. Sue, Sue was supposed to tell him, you know? Yeah. And it's like, so we said, well, I think, I think we're all set. And then here comes, we were sitting in the yard, me and Cecil waiting for the other two to show up. And Gary came out after 10 minutes or so. It's like, he was all like, my mother's all upset. What's going on? It's like. Yeah, I was headed down for him the other day. and. He was like, well, stop in and talk to mom before you go down our way. And I was like, well, I'm not going down your way. But if there's a class four road there, I mean, right. everybody's not going to stop and ask to use it, I guess. And then Alex came along. He said, Alex is friends with, knows Gary better. You know, it's hard to explain to him because I think he, he can't hear. He's one deaf. Thing, so it's yeah. hard to. I had to explain well, it. Well. So I was trying, and then Alex came, and it was, yeah. it was like when Alex was done with him in five minutes, it was like, yeah. so <laughs> he worked his charm. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. I didn't want to upset Bert, but Kelly no. did call someone to tell him. Yeah, I know, and, and sent a letter to Sue. Yeah. Sue sp specifically said that I will make sure my brother knows what's going on so that yeah. it's all ahead of time. But. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, it, it, it is what it is. But well, I'm glad Alex was able to so, move it over. So the entrance to that road is going through Dean's dooryard. And the entrance to that off road, to the right. that road goes through you, Dean's you go land. The driveway yeah. and the, but you go past Sorry. the house and then you kind of run like this toward the garage. Yeah. 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 Right straight ahead is pond. Yeah. It's got a pond. It's just to the right of the pond. It goes right oh, down that oh, hedge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you wouldn't know it was there to drive into their driveway. It's not, it's not driven out. It's not. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you wouldn't first, even know. The first thing. little bit, you know, and then it goes down into those fields. So. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So there has to be, <clears throat> does it have to be an easement of some kind or something for that to be able to be used? No. It's class four road. It's class four road. No. Right. But there's so, nobody uses it. So, yeah. it, and huh. I'm sure. Well, right now, the Bob Snowmobile Bob. Club's the only yeah. identity that uses that. That road. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe there's some others that walk. But you or could. Something, but yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. It's a I didn't stop and ask anybody when I went down. Mm -hmm. yep. No one came out yelling at you. Well, he came out. Gary came out and tried to run me over. But With what? Before, he's already run me over a couple times before. So. Oh jeez. Um. They got the road blocked down the middle, down the Royalton. So they've they've already broken the law. They blocked that class four road. 
Yeah. Is Royalton is Royalton's is still a class four? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you can't. I mean, if it's public road, you can't walk it. You can't mm -hmm. gate it. Can't walk it. Right. Can't block it. I don't know if the Royalton did it or the Royalton Stonewall Club, but it's right where the Stonewall Club turns into the field. Mm. Hmm. Big old stop with a big log across the road. Oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. That's what Royalton did? Uh. Yeah, can't do that. You have to go open it up. Well, I guess you can do that, but it's not legal. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can do whatever you want to do, but it doesn't make it legal, so. So one thing I, I was going to say, too, was I think we brought this up before, but the last time we had received state highway aid for that road was 1980. I think that came out at some point anyways, but I wanted to go back and back to that. Um, so since we have a little more time, do you want to go through the town manager's report and stuff? Because we have a couple. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. And if, if we get to the schedule, if there's anybody that comes in a couple yeah. minutes late. I mean, Orca's going to show it yeah. anyways. Exactly. Um, so if anybody shows up and they wanted to have public comments, then we could yeah. always entertain that. It's yeah, we'll wait till... Nothing wrong with that? We'll wait till... Oh, I just wait till six. Okay. We'll get to it. Yeah. We can wait till no, six. No, we just... We, we had the, um, yeah, the public can. hearing for the class... Yeah, I knew that was going the on. The road, and yeah. then we got... That went by faster, so we decided oh. to start a couple oh, of items. Okay. So we just talked about... Okay. Uh, the Perm Road um, piece, okay. um, and then we were just, you know, we still got five minutes, so we were going <coughs> to tackle the town manager's report, yeah. do a little. So we had, um, so the town clerk wanted me to remind everyone that the Vermont primary is Tuesday, August 13th, 2024, at the Bethel Elementary School lobby from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., Absentee ballots are available now. You can contact Pam at 234-9722. So she did want people to know that. Also, we did get the school tax number today. So um, the state homestead tax rate dropped by 0.18%, and the non-residential tax rate went up 10.23%. Um, so. It, it was interesting. I know that we had we had challenged our CLA and got it up to 80.20. We had a little bit of growth in the grand list, but I obviously I was not expecting the split. But we didn't know the yield for the school tax. So um, <clears throat> obviously, we're always happy to have the homestead tax rate cheaper than the non-residential. We that's the way we want it. So it just worked out for school tax that way. Um, and the town municipal tax rate is up 9.95% over last year, which is about what we estimated. There wasn't really any growth in the grand list. And um, I won't know the exact local agreement rate until I pay, uh, it's calculated when you um, uh, calculate and print tax bills, because that's the local agreement rate. Just a reminder is even if, like the town, um, you guys vote every five years to um, make the Grange non-taxable, but we still have to pay school tax on that amount. It's also, you have a veteran's exemption of $40,000 per veteran. We also have to pay the school tax on that. So that's what your local agreement rate is, is picking up school tax. So those are the final, uh, we had done the municipal rates, but school tax just in today. Um, I also want to give you a little update. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you have seen it or not. Um, on the news, there's been a lot of about OSHA and VOSHA and fire departments. And I talked to Gary. I printed it out like 225 pages. And uh, there was a nice interview on WCAX with uh, Vermont State Firefighters Association President Peter Heffernan, uh, Bristol Fire Chief Brett LaRose, and um, they certainly are, you know, are, are encouraging all fire departments to comment. This is something that could close or at least double, triple their budgets. Um, I have contacted the public safety person at Vermont Legal Cities and Towns. I contacted our insurance agent uh, at VFIS, uh, the one who just settled our fire truck claim, because they're a big organization nationwide, thinking maybe they have some lobbyists that will be working on our behalf. I contacted Senator Sanders' office, sent them the information. They were participated in a call recently with Peter Heffernan and Brett LaRose. Um, I'm going to send a message to um, the uh, Vermont Town Managers Association 
um, to let them get the word out because uh, Senator Sanders had heard, I was the first municipal manager they'd heard from. They'd heard from fire chiefs, but no municipal managers. So I'm gonna let them know. And I did just send an email to um, Kirk Wright, to Kirk White today saying, hey, if you're not aware of this, you need to spread this around and get all of the local, you know, this is, this is gonna be a big deal for us. And uh, the list, if you haven't seen the segment on CAX, I suggest that you watch it. Mm -hmm. um, I do take comfort knowing that the current commissioner of emergency management is an assistant fire chief. So in a small department. So I'm hoping, you know, I know people are aware of it and this is a nation, nationwide thing, but Gary just told me he didn't have the bandwidth to deal with it. So I told him I would do what I could. Um, but obviously it's federal law, so we need some pushback, you know, there. So we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, the good news is we sold the cruiser. I say we, Oscar, <clears throat> called me and said he had had someone look at the cruiser and he gave him a price of $10,000. I said, well, Sunport Wand 11. <laughs> but uh, I said, what about the equipment? It's included. I said, where's it going? He said, Orange County Sheriff's Office, uh, George Contos, the Orange County Sheriff, wanted it. And then one of their deputies came and looked at it, and he said, well, I think he wants to offer you nine. I said, 10 firm. That's it, we already, so I expect to hear from him this week and get a check. So at least the cruiser sold, so that money will stay in the cruiser fund, um, just like we talked about. Um, also sent out, um, we had bids for Sugar Hill, that massive culvert on Sugar Hill. And so we're, I hired uh, New England consulting engineers today. They were the low bidder by, <clears throat> almost $100,000, uh, and I had was working with someone at the state who would work with them before that helps us, you know, help, gives me good technical advice. So um, I will be working with um, with Dexter at uh, New England Consulting, so hopefully we'll be turning that project around as that is a FEMA project. So tax bills will be printed Wednesday, they'll be stuffed Thursday, so out in the mail Thursday, Friday, people will be getting their tax bills. Um, you know, first one is due August 15th, then November 15th, then May 15th. Yeah, February 15th. I'm like, no, I missed one. February, thank you. So, um, you know, that's all coming your way. So that's an update for now. Right. Busy week. We have uh, water department meeting tomorrow for the construction. They're up on Crystal Drive now. And I believe our project for Sand Hill is out to bid. And um, FEMA's back on Wednesday, so for December flood work. So that's where we're at. Okay. All right. So now we'll just go to public comment. So if there's anything that anybody in the public would like to comment on, Ellie had raised her hand first. Um, I would like to share with you. Sometimes what also is um, that you can do, Ellie, like to um, piggyback with those events is often like like the sheriff's department may have somebody that would be interested in um, not just attending, but sometimes they have some resources to hand out to kids like helmets or the other one too it, that you can sometimes uh, piggyback with these is um, I see it often like the local um, hospitals or health clinics usually have like the bicycle safety helmets and stuff that are like either free or at a very discounted yeah. price, like $10 for a helmet type thing that you may want to see if anybody. Um, skateboard park um, party, we got free helmets. Yeah. We got free helmets, pads. So we're doing that with the helmets and pads and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And also we have Gifford is a sponsor for us for oh, good. Gifford. We have a connection with Gifford um, and they've, We've talked about doing a help thing with them and stuff. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you for this. And I'm sure if you talk to the sheriff in town, they'd probably be more than happy to come out there on that, that evening to spend, you know, an hour with the kids or whatever and 
look over bicycles and, you know. Mm -hmm. I can reach out to him if you want. The, sh um, the share. Um, well, yeah, you can do that. We have a meeting on Wednesday night, and um, you can get back to us about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I'll give him a heads up. I'm sure he can have somebody be there. Yeah, those are always good workshops to have, especially, See you know, case. gives a meet and greet with the local law enforcement, and often they have other items that can help out kids with bicycles or... Hey, Scott, make sure you sign in, please. I'm going to forget tomorrow. That that's awesome. Down. Yeah, that's great. Hey. I saw all the cars over there today. They must be doing a training. Oh. Yeah, it must be a lifeguard thing. I on. think so. Like, there's lifeguard training. We came back from Upper Gilead. There was a bunch of cars there. So, Did you have a nice fourth? Yes, I did. Good. In fact, does anybody know? There was the fireworks in the field, which I watched, but there was... Competing yeah. fireworks. There was some going off on Avon Drive. Yeah, usually Avon, Avon. Road, is that what was? Yeah. Because we Which had. Over the ball Because we were. Which night we was were on? seeing the ones. We were seeing the ones at the field, mm -hmm. and then we were seeing others going off, and so we had two shows. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't cost you a dime. I know. It was really good. That's yeah, and, uh, and it was good weather for it. Right. You know, and Thursday and Friday nights were good really, for the fireworks. Yeah, good for the parade stuff, you know, the weather was. And, uh, and the Randolph Clear parade was good, too. Good. Yes. Anything else, public comment wise? Anybody? I was just going to ask about do you have roadside mowing this year? We do, actually. Okay. I was just funny you say that. So. We should publicly state, thank you, um, that we have a new road foreman. Um, our new road foreman is A.J. Lewin. Uh, he took over last week. And um, so uh, the same guy who did it, we've done in the past couple of years, Mitchells, they do for the state. So we actually were expecting them, we're expecting them any time. A.J. just texted me the new lease, the list, and I forwarded the list to, um, to Jason Mitchell. And uh, so the state is only paying for one pass this year, so I, they, Ryan keeps me in the loop, slack, as to when they're coming to the state. They usually piggyback with us shortly after. So I expect them any time they could be here this week. Does that mean that they do the, the edge of the streets? They do the roadside mowing, yep. Yeah, the streets, because East Street has been like crazy. Yeah, I can, yeah, I'm not sure if East Street's on the list, but yeah, look, East I just Street got it. Yeah, East Street has been like Weed City. In fact, we, huh? had a, we have an interesting sign now. Uh, East Street does, um, because last November, the, the town plow guy nicely plowed down the East yeah. Street sign. So we didn't have a sign until... until yes, so, so East Street is not on the list. Okay. So um, we, you know, we currently pay for, we're at 57.56 miles, because we pay per mile, so each oh. year we increase. We have some people who don't want to be roadside mode. Oh. So we're Camp Brook, North Road, Royalton Hill, Pea Vine, Christian, Findlay, Liliesville, Camp Bell, oh, but Factory you do Hill. Ro you do Royalton Hill, though. Yep, Factory oh. Hill, Store Hill, Gage, Deering, yeah. North Main, Sanders, Gilead, McIntosh, Byam. Oh, Brink Hill, must be a typo. Dart yeah. Hill, Gay Hill, yeah. Abbott, Cleveland Brook, Sugar Hill Road, Falcon, North Falcon, Whittier, Hooper Hollow. So, so our East Street sign is now this short little sign because, um, because it got plowed down in November. Okay. And so it was... Is it still down? It's not down, but people just propped it up so we have a teeny sign. Okay, I'll let the road foreman know. AJ East Street sign. It's interesting. And then some, some roads get mowed every year. Oh, and some yeah. roads get mowed every other or every third year depending on okay. on and then AJ's trimming the trees that are hanging on the road or is that part of roadside mowing? They do some of that actually. They do some of that. Yeah, yeah the signs are getting They'll, covered. Speed limit signs. Yeah. You've got a bunch of sign, warning signs that you can't see. Yeah, exactly. They were mowing Route 12 Wednesday <clears throat> maybe or something. Yeah, I saw them go by. Yeah, it'll be long. But yeah. Um, 
So that's what we, we're obviously mm -hmm. at their mercy. State first, we're second. So they do yeah. state, then hit us. So, so the state pays mm -hmm. for you said one pass? The state, no. The state is only paying on their <clears throat> property for one pass. Oh, we pay for two passes both sides. And um, been very happy with them. They <coughs> hit somebody's tree on some private property. They went right back and took really good care of them. And I haven't had any complaints about their work or anyone who's had to deal with them. I've only had one instance, and they were took care of it immediately. Yeah, and that was on Gilead. No. Can I move right along? There. Yeah, I think last year they came early and we had a lot of regrowth after, so I was actually glad that they were coming a little later this year. So, you should see them. I'm expecting them anytime. Anything else? Public comment? There's nobody online tonight, so. So, my little push. If you're going to do Christian Hill, and mm -hmm. you're going to do Store Hill, and you're going to do Factory Hill, you would only add less than a, about a quarter mile if you went down over the Oxbow. Which is how many houses? How many Bethel residents live on Oxbow? Uh, actually, you, cut, you, you do go out the two, that live, three that live out there. Okay, and that's what I thought was they were maintained to that point. But um, we'll see, he's added more to it um, this time. So, you know, it's something I can, we can add to the list, you know, for next year. We only have so much money budgeted per mile, but I can ask him about it. He's new. Let's ask him if he wants to add, Os uh, add Oxbow. Because um, it does look, he hand wrote some on here, as you can see in his picture. So I'll text him and ask him if he wants to add him on. He's got, he hand wrote on Sugar Hill, Falcon, Whittier, Hooper Hollow. So I can text him and ask him if he can't put Oxbow on there. How many people live on Hooper Hollow that like that road? Um, I think there's Four. probably eight. Really? Yeah, because you've got, uh, what's his Franks at the end, you've got the whites, you've got, oh, there's our two whites, Only and one. then yeah. there's, yeah, so I'm not sure, but I thought there was like eight. But I, I can ask him, Dave, I don't know. But not my call now, his, but I'll ask him. Six on Hooper? East Street. Oh, on East Street, yeah. So, but I'll tell him that the sign is down. And I'll also put add him, ask him to add Oxbow. I mean, you're right. If they're up there, it's not going to take them long. So probably drink longer to drive around than it would to be just mow down over the bank. Yeah. Well, then fine. We'll have, ask him to do it. I'm sure he doesn't. And again, there are some there. streets that get done every year, and then there are some streets well, that, that get done, done for a every couple oh, of I'm sure years. That's true. So we used and to so do my truck gets scratched. You know, I, got, I use it. Uh -huh. I know a lot of people I use know. it. Both sides. Of, when I go down through there, both sides are getting scratched. I told him that. And. No. Yeah, no. Spelled, no. I did it one year. It was rough. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll have him add Oxbow. <clears throat> and uh, I'll text him later uh, or tomorrow, ask him to add Oxbow. So. Okay. Anything else? Public comment? Okay. Here and none. And you did, did write down to have him look out for the warning signs that can't be seen. What Jordan was talking about? Oh, yeah, I would assume they would always look for that sort of stuff. The roadside mowers? No, the town crew. Oh, okay. We've still got, we've still got road. Uh, oh, some of the road closed signs oh, okay. and stuff and, like and that. You can't see all them because they're around. so buried uh, in the brush. Okay, I'll make a note to him. Um, but the, like uh, on our hill, we are having enough trouble with the speeders. So there are two 25 mile an hour speed limit signs that if you didn't know they were there, you wouldn't see them. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Locked by brush, um, need to clear it's a safety sign. I had people set me off and call me. A, I'm not going to say what they me. Oh, pleasant. All right, yeah, I'll let AJ know. He can add that to his list that they need, that he needs. You know what, and we're going to have somebody mowing on Wednesdays, uh, a different person. And um, so we outsourced the mowing and we had a employment change, and uh, so we'll be bringing somebody else in. They might have time to do some of that trimming on Wednesday, so I'll ask, suggest that too. Yep. Um, when he, you know what I mean? If he doesn't have enough mowing to do, he could do that. So thank you. That's a good idea. Well, add him in there. If it wasn't on my back, I would do it. Yeah, no. But you shouldn't be out there doing it. I already did perm. I can't do them all. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> 
All right, anything else, public comment? Are you two the only one coming for? Energy. Energy oh. to be here. All right, and Gene called me today and yeah. verified the time. I told him 6.15, he's got a couple. No. We yeah, he's got a couple minutes. So we have a couple of, we can just move forward. Well, we have a couple of. Did other. he have, did you have something else for public comment? I'm just, just going to mention grading, the roads need grading. Yeah, exactly. I did table. talk about that. Roads, I, and I already told AJ that, so. Um, okay, yeah, so you can go, you can do your minutes. Yep. Uh, we have the select board meeting minutes from the 24th of June. Need a motion to approve unless you have any amendments to it. Make a motion we approve as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> all right. And I think the only thing we had in there other other minutes was just the um, planning commission that was on there. <laughs> Do you guys feel confident with moving forward on, on your own or? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard you were doing the presentation. Vander said, well, it's going to be. OK. <laughs> I'll stand here in case they walk in. All right, so on behalf of the Energy Committee, I'm Josh Waddell. Um, and uh, so I'd say the past nine months, we've been trying to research some kind of um, low or no cost charging option. Uh, to bring a little bit of demand and business downtown. Um, it was kind of spurred by uh, several of us noticing right here in the parking lot, we already have a meter and a panel and everything kind of there waiting for it. Very simple and low cost to put one in. The challenge has been that, you know, you don't want to give away electricity for free. Uh, you want to be able to bill for it, um, if somewhere to use that. And so that's, that's been the, the toughest challenge uh, in my research, trying to find options that would allow. I was told that this was looked at a few years ago and, and the costs were astronomical. Um, and so I had a few options that were okay. Uh, one fell through. Um, but uh, in the last few months, um, we've also been touched with Charge Vermont, which is, I'm not sure if it's state or Green Mountain Power, that um, claim to help us find both funding and assistance to coordinate for charging programs. And we had three different sites that we discussed and wanted to discuss with them. After four months uh, of them kind of leading us on, they never got back to us until they said, oh, funding's gone for your county. Um, so we still like to continue to look for something a little bit more um, significant, um, possibly through them. But in the meantime, we found a relatively low cost. Uh, this is where we thought we maybe could use Merck funds to cover it. but. Obviously, we have to use that only for education. Um, so we've come across a commercial charger that's only $1,500. That includes three years of cloud service that allows you to bill however you want, whatever you want to set. And then hopefully the idea is that you cover the cost of electricity maybe a little bit more to make it affordable to put in one charger in the spot right behind us here in the lot. Um, it would not involve any electricians at all because the plug's already there. I assume right now you have the breakers turned off and locked. Um, I hear someone walking up the stairs, so maybe that's them. Mm -hmm. There he is. Uh, about that time being. <laughs> well, I'll, co I'll continue anyway. But um, so I have some cut sheets for that particular charger here, um, and we'll mock up in the background. Look at that. Um, this is a North American manufacturer. That's fairly high quality, and they've decided to come out with lower cost options to try to make things more affordable for, for people, businesses, and municipalities. So it kind of fits our thing. This is, we still intend, like I said, to make this a pilot, like 
you know, this may be for the next two or three years, see how, it, how it's used while we continue to look for something a little bit more serious, but um, we think it would really help um, drive some business downtown. So instead of, you know, the next closest chargers are over at Green Mountain Power, where you get to sit there for an hour and twiddle your thumbs and pay an absorbent amount of, of uh, it's, it's almost four times the cost as, as what you pay at home. Um, so we think this would be a, a driver for some business downtown you know, go get some food or, or something if you're here for an hour, or it could be a service for residents, but. Um, so to be clear, what we'd be asking for the town for would be the cost of the charger, which covers three years of service, so that's $1,550, um, and maybe dedicate that space or put a sign up to say parking for charging only. Um, we can literally handle the install because an electrician is not required. Uh, Do you have any other spiel to add? I think it sounds like you pretty much covered it. It seems it really is. I know that we've talked about this stuff before. Yeah, um, yeah, Vander Jack. Oh, is it? No, I always like a microphone. Uh, yeah, I, I really, like Josh said, this is just, we've done a lot of going through and looking at different options and looking at different programs and stuff and reaching out and trying to get like these with the charge Vermont thing and then that just fell through we spent we're on the hook I don't know if you gave them a background on that but they just you know told strung us along for months and months so it was cool to see something that looks like it's a good fit for a pilot program we can look at the usage of it and use that to monitor the effectiveness it's not like we can we can obviously you know check with businesses and kind of get their qualitative analysis on it, but we can really look at the, you know, usage rates on it and say, all right, here, this is getting used. So we know that there is a definable thing to say this is an effective pilot. We're saying people are using it. If it isn't, then we kind of, then we know that it's not getting used. But this yeah. way we can it's at least have some data to really make that decision from. Hmm. Can you we may also be able to find more uh, grants to cover the cost after the fact. Pretty sure they do exist. Is this 120 volt? It's 240. 240. And there's a 240 outlet. So there's there. a 240 50 amp outlet already there, and so it literally plugs right into it. Um, and so again, it's, it's the same charger that you would have installed at your house. You know, like yeah. would charge over the course of several hours. We're not talking fast chargers; those are probably right. closer to half a million two. dollars. What's that? To level two. Level two charger. Okay. Oh, it says level one. Up. This paper says not a But a level two. two. Charging connector type one. Per hour that it's type plugged one, in for level two. Oh, okay. How much charge does that provide? Well, it'll depend on your car, but again. It's all right here. You would tip, if this is not something you use for traveling, no. this is something that you may be using you your car there for two or three hours. Um, just a slow charger. Putting in fast chargers, again, would probably be. <clears throat> Half a million dollars, and you know, Rochester, for example, did just put in fast chargers. I think Green Mountain Power did that. I can imagine that's significant cost, and you definitely want to have that covered by as many grants as possible. But maybe if we prove, maybe we have some here. Uh, we also talked about other sites, maybe up at the school. Um, but this we found is, as a very simple, low cost, low effort solution to get things rolling. Yeah, with the power already right there, the new Wi-Fi on the sign reaches out to get to make all the things operate. Just so much of the work has already been done. All we need to do is install it and not needing an electrician to do that <laughs> makes that even easier. And I, did you talk about you know, the, that we would take it as the, uh, you know, the energy committee members volunteering to help maintain as kind of part of the energy committee responsibilities going forward if, you know, you charger park cleanup day for the parking space. So the, the <laughs> cloud, um, so people would pay and it would go into the cloud and we would have to work something out with them as far as how the, and the town treasurer so on they, how to so transfer. So they would scan the code, we put on the sign there, and mm -hmm. that code would, they probably put in their credit card information and it would meet with them and bill them and then pay the town back for, for their use. I don't know if it's at the end of the month, but you should get it paid. Okay. for everyone that uses it. Um, and, and again, you can set pricing. So if you know Green Mountain Power, power charges, 
at a home, it's usually 19, 20 cents a kilowatt hour. You could set it at 30. Um, but for example, Green Mountain charges, I believe it's like 60 or 70. It's, it's, it's a punishment to go over there. But um, Oh, the one that they just put in at their place? The, well, there's been one over in, uh, they just, just over in Rolton. Yeah, and they just, yeah, yeah they just put in their new ones. ones. Yeah, I thought there's they a slow one, and then there's a medium one over there. But again, you're sitting there for a while, and there's nothing to do. You don't really want to, anyone using, that's why you don't see it used very often, because you usually want to go somewhere, either you're traveling and you want something very fast, yeah. and next to a bathroom or a rest stop, or you're going somewhere where you can plug in for a few hours, and you're going to eat, going to Babes, you know, going shopping, at, you know, one of these slow chargers for people that don't really have it at home. You wouldn't, you wouldn't use this while you're on a long trip, or you'd be stuck there for a while. What's the level ones? What do they have at the um, park and ride? Are those really those slow? Those are just regular habits. Oh. Right? Oh. Yeah, so, so if I were to plug in there to charge, it would take me four days. <laughs> They're bring just your regular tent. Bring regular. your tent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, this would take a full charge, would take some time, too. If someone to charge fully, it, it varies on the car, but it you know, could take eight hours or something yeah. like that. And usually you're not going out charging fully. Uh, well, it could be for a resident that, for, for example, wants a car and doesn't have it at home. Mm -hmm. Although I mentioned Green Mountain has a lot of great programs to do that, give you free charger. Um, I think it's a little bit more valuable for people passing through town, want to stop in for a meal, or, hey, I'm going to be in a for the next three hours. I didn't have a chance to top off. And the, it's a solution. The, like, you know, keeping the battery in between 20 and 80 percent rather than, you know, it isn't necessarily like your phone where you're like, I got to charge this bad boy up 100 percent. Some people may be, you know, more than happy to stop in, have a place to charge their car while they're getting a meal, while they're doing some shopping, and then be off on their way. And, and That's another reason why you charge for it, because <laughs> if it's free, people will leave their car. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Good point. So we had, like, Paul has been with me for quite a long time, and I think Dave's been at least to one of these discussions where, so I don't know, I'll date myself, I've been on the board for nine years, so I think it was somewhere around maybe seven years ago. Mm -hmm. But six, seven years ago, we had the first um, ability, let's say, to, to put chargers in. And at that time, they had um, you know level one, two, and three chargers. Level one, they had a grant program that was going to pay pretty much match. So yeah, they were pretty much going to pay the full amount to put it in. Um, <clears throat> And, and then level two and then three was like astronomically, like, you know, you were going to have to pay, you know, forty to $100,000 to have one of these units. Um, and I know the first time around we, we had talked about it because it was pretty much a, you know, 100% grant funded thing. Uh, we did talk about that point where the location at that time was either here or up to the band shell were the two uh, places we had talked about. And then, if, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I remember we, we ended up not moving forward with the plan. Uh, one, because we didn't know long-term ownership of that. Who would be the owner of it, right? Like, who, who's going to be uh, go out there to police that um, unit? Uh, and, and then a couple years later, so I think we were talking about kind of moving forward the project. Mm -hmm. And then it stopped for whatever reason. I don't remember what it was, because we even had money that we put into it or set aside. Um, and then maybe. I think the grant funding went away too. And then maybe three years ago, three or four years ago, there was another opportunity. We started talking about this again. Uh, but that was right when they were getting ready to put 20 of them by the interstate. Mm -hmm. So we had kind of pumped the brakes on, well, if they're going to put 20 of them there, why well, put one in Bethel? Because, you know. So we didn't do the program. We didn't do it again uh, because of that. Um, but, but it sounded like at the time, and the energy committee has changed quite a bit over the years. At the time, I, I, we had discussed about you know, what would it look like if it wasn't necessarily the town's responsibility? Like, have we talked to our neighbor businesses? So just throwing it out there, like, like a McCulloughs or, or the Shell station or somebody like, would they be interested in 
you know, like the energy community kind of partnering with a business to see if, you know, because then we don't have to manage it. It'd be more like maybe you can find that, hey, we, there's some grant money, we can kind of put you in the right direction and you have a parking spot, you know, that type of thing. But then it didn't really go anywhere. Um, didn't hear anything back on it, so I just don't know. Because there was a funding source for yeah. a while, and that's what I sent it to all the local businesses, yeah. saying, you know, do you, you could put this in, and they're going to pay for it, and right. it could be benefit you. And, and it was they were targeting businesses, but. And it I, seems I, like I, now, like the people that really want charging is more fast charge, you know, um, like oops, I need to get to somewhere quickly. Um, or kind of a top-off situation, but we had looked at the level ones before, like, unless you lived here, you know. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, it's not even a charter, it's just Well, I think that the other issues in putting it there, we were talking about handicap accessibility. There was some lighting issues, some handicap accessibility because, issues. Because it's sloped there, yeah. and you had to have two spots so that you could have somebody with a handicap. We had two charges with two, two slots right, each. each. So we had so that, four parking spots. Yeah. Oh. That so was that part of the record. Handicap access requirement. Yeah. 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 So the, the logistics yeah, I can't of that remember. spot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this would just be, that's why I said it's no red tape, low cost, uh, literally, because any business could do the same. Well, you'd still have to give the two spots, right? No, no it would just be there, one. Just one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. So there's only one plug there. I mean, so, so what would happen if we went minutes? forward with, say we went forward with this and we had one spot, you know, for this level two charger, right? And four years down the road we say, uh, you know, it's yeah. not working out for us. How, how is it like a lease or how do we get out of it or, or what would the, we do so at that point? So the price includes three years of cloud service. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're really buying money yourself. So at any point you could just unplug it and get rid of it if you want to. And they said uh, per year, if you were to go beyond the three years, it would be less than 200 a year to continue that. Like a membership um, type thing? Yeah, so again, what you're paying for is the, the billing in the background, you know, to have something not be free. Yeah. Uh, or you make it free, and, but that's not advisable. Our hope is that within three years, we have a, a little bit more commercial solution and a few more chargers and maybe in a different site. And we were talking about the Van Shelton School as well. And those are discussions we wanted to hold with Charge Vermont, who claim to have several sources of funds for bigger projects. They said they could cover 90% cost of you know much more expensive high high value chargers, faster chargers. And, um, but we thought this is a quick solution that we could take advantage of immediately. Um, and literally install, manage ourselves. And so the, the, the responsibility of the car owner to have the adapter, because not all cars have the same plug. This has the standard 1772 plug that 90% right. of cars all already all have built in every Tesla comes with. So the only cars that don't have it is the Tesla, and they come with it. And I might, might have missed it, but the hardware itself, it, is that... Did you say there was grant money associated with that, or would we have to pay for that? He's, no, he's saying, I think he said, did you say 1550? 1550 is the hardware yeah. and three years of service. Yeah. Gotcha. That's We're hoping we could you. find some funds after the fact to, to perhaps get us a rebate. But I don't want to say we have that until we do. Yeah. Green Mountain Power will give the homeowner one. They should cut the talent deal, too. Yes, there's that's programs. Not, that's basically the same charger they're giving similar charger that yep, they're giving to the homeowner. Yeah, so Green Mountain Power definitely has great programs. If you, if you have a registered mm -hmm. Vermont car, we'll give you a free charger for your house. You still have to pay an electrician to install it, and you get discounted electrical rates. But that's, that's for those who have a registered EV mm -hmm. for their address. So Paul, I'm also doing the minutes, so I just wanted to clarify. Um, so are you... Were you saying that poor lighting and not handicap accessible was an issue with this site or a previous site? I'm sorry, I was just trying to get no, the site right here on the end here. Okay, all right. I just want to make sure we had I was talked to about get my notes right. There was no lighting and this the corner the slope the made line. it. And there's no legality to that parking spot. If you provide the EV, it it <clears> is just it is what it is. There's no specific. It'd be nice to put a, put a sign that says parking while charging. Right. Yeah. But the lighting isn't a problem anymore because of 
the level of charging it is? I don't know if the light is an issue. I mean, I is the there, is I'm not sure what the light the lighting situation is there now, if yeah, someone was there at night, hoop is there deal any, is, but. Is there any obligation on the town's part to make sure that it's handicap accessible? That's not, not there. Case. No, not in this case. Yeah. So that requires it. And if we, and I think that if there were something that we were like, oh, we've identified a cool grant that requires that, mm -hmm. I would think that we would look at that grant as an opportunity to just help fund the rest mm -hmm. of the repave. And, 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 and like, about. if we're going to do that, go for the big money and say, we need to redo the whole thing, mm -hmm. handicap accessible, regrade, do everything necessary for it because. There is both big, big money there, but if, but if you know, if it's helpful to have that charger out there that we can say people are here, they're using the charger. We know that if people, if we had, you know, that we've got the interest, and it's, it's it helps on the on the application end to say here we have some quantifiable numbers for you. And use now in the area of that particular model. I'm not sure. I mean, there are public commercial chargers. Um, that are both free or not free. Well, I'm just thinking it's a, is this a new company? The company's been around company. for track record? several years. Um, there are good. very highly rated, rated reviews of their units. They're fairly beefy units, um, and they used to be much more expensive. And you know, they're made in Canada, a Canadian company. Not just Let's say a three-year equipment warranty. And they give you a three-year yeah. warranty. So again, it would be totally covered for three years. I think the only thing would be covered if someone were to steal a cable. And, and how, how does this um, fare in weather? So it's totally weather rated. It's made to be outside. Cold weather and all that? Okay. So. It looks like by this picture that it's in the permitted parking spot. So that's another question. That that's the first spot in the permit. I don't even know how those permits work. It's just for people who don't have parking and they have yeah. to park down here so we like the apartment so we have mm -hmm. them use permitted parking but I don't so think i think that's that would be you know we it's not the, end of the world the town may need to move that sign over one and yeah, put a sign doable. there but it's, it's up to the town it's, but it's not a big deal we don't sell a lot of the permits we don't have a lot of apartments right. on main street but so it's i don't think it would be a, a deal breaker josh did you guys reach out to Green Mountain Power to work with the town and they just said that yeah so that's where that charge from um we actually tried reaching out to Green Mountain Power back in November. <coughs> kind of got ghosted. Then we found Charge Vermont in January. I got response immediately. Thank you for your application. They were going to help you with a number of things. And they were going to cover, they were literally cover not even lower expensive chargers. They were suddenly giving us the hope that, oh, we'll give you like $200,000 for a nice charge site. Oh, yeah. And we cover 90% of the cost of anything and maybe 100%. So it sounded very good. And every month since January, I've been nagging them. Uh, they said, oh, no, we don't get back to you for four to six weeks. And after six weeks, what's going on? And I got a thing saying, oh, Windsor County's used up all their funding for this year. I'm going to continue to nag them to hopefully get on next year. So we have it. Is this, well, I can, but this, so that chart for month connects you with they have Green Mountain Power and, and the state. Like that. kind of Not that I'm aware of, I yeah. can look they for it though, but I can also talk help about municipalities it. through this they process it, yeah. for something that can be more a chance to look. legitimate oh. than this. Yeah, I, yeah, I can talk to... But I think if we could reach out to Green Mountain Power, because it'd be nice to see something that is it would be used more and to be right. showing that there is a want for it and I, I'm the only worry I would have is that it's underwhelming and people are like not using it and then it almost shows the opposite effect that it's not getting used all the time and I, I I would almost rather see something that and I'm not against it I just I, I think I would be weary of using it as the prototype and then saying we're gonna base the want or need off of it when it's underwhelmed, Pretty as opposed to the chargers in their own locations, like they have them down the road. And I've heard other people say, "Oh, Green Mountain already got their funding and put them where they want them." But I so think Therese has a point of contact, but, though, and if we could just touch base with them and just I can because they had talked about they were working to try to get a 19 million dollar EPA grant, and they were going to make Bethel they do like a big grid thing and mm -hmm. batteries and and really to make us more resilient. So I do have a lady. I'm happy to reach out to her and see. I also have a printout of um, of grant funding, so I can see maybe there's something out there. Yeah. I'm happy to take a look. 
Yeah, again, if you'd like. We would like to continue to try for something bigger and better. Sure. This was just a, yeah. you know, something we identified as a fast, low cost. Yeah. And we'd awesome. and we'd seen somebody who had done like the real fly by night. Like we saw something that looked like it was really good, and then that company immediately disappeared. And, oh, jeez! And, and, and so when we see this one that's got more experience, and, and, and yeah, I just looked it up real quick, and it had really good reviews. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they do yeah. or don't? They do. Yeah. And I can they look have a lot of good reviews. There's, you can buy them on Amazon. Okay. Yep. And I can look in the budget. I got to find the money in the budget, but um, because we just started our new budget cycle. But I also happy to reach out. Well, I, I can look at a couple did sources. A little more research on it too, and, and if you reached out, you know, we I can just see if she knows. Connect and, again on the twenty second. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm if happy. Know, if they know that we're really serious about it, I think that that might get them. But when it's the volunteer committee, yeah, yeah. The come and come and review it. Might be, yeah, it might I'm happy to way. reach out to her and look at a couple other possible sources for funding. If I can, mm. so I have a list. I'm happy to look, and then yeah, um, cool. I'll also look through the budget too to figure. I don't mm. have a budget for the energy committee. I don't think. Maybe you have a couple hundred bucks. So I just got to find the money. So I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I think we do under parks or town hall building maintenance. I'll have to look, but I'm happy to look in the budget. I think that we should market our location being an east-west corridor connecting 14, 89, 12, and 100. Yeah. That, you know, the state should have something. I thought they did. Do you know that, Josh? I thought that the state had a website, or somebody has a website, where if you have an electric vehicle that you yes. can. Yeah, but, but to, to, to try to get somebody to help sell it, that whole is we're primary place besides, faster. I don't know, Gilly, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm trying to, to the state well, wants to get people here yeah. and putting them in the problem is we're competing with a whole bunch of other people. I sure. Don't want to have a rabbit hole. Yeah. That was one of the reasons we wanted to do, do two rivers. So Rochester is doing one thing in Chelsea and we call the whole Oh, right, America. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it'll be, I think that Josh and um, Xander make a good point, which is if babes, if cockadoodle, if the sandwich shop knows that, then it's something they could also advertise to say, hey, we have a charger, you know, go get a sandwich, this and that. So put it on their website. Put it on their website, our website. But I can, um, but yeah, I guess for some reason I thought someone told me, I don't have a, an EV, but I thought someone told me there was an app yeah, that, that connects you to well, there, there are several. So uh, okay. If we were, if we were, it would go so on. Was, we would then submit all the apps. So okay. The that's there. Yeah, so so that would help you too. He's saying when you I just, yeah, I just want to talk. It's not stubborn enough. Uh, we, we got the blazer. Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, or Bethel doesn't have one. Or, you know. Okay. <laughs> I have a, okay. That's that's why we're charged. That's why we set the rate to charge the money for it. But if somebody like that's, I mean, I mean, you do have the ability to set a uh, punishment fee for being plugged in and not charging. Charging. You, you can have, you can set the time as well as per kilowatt hour. Possibly gradually, so it's really five minutes later. Yeah, so a lot of times you'll see that. That's more common at the fast chargers where you really get people out of there. I don't see that very often at the slower ones, but you have that ability. Um, if, if, you know, we suddenly saw a lot of demand and we want to encourage people to move along, and you have that dynamic pricing, so it's a tool. You, it allows us to set whatever price we want. And the I town would, hall would be in control of the, the financing app? Yep. The town Bethel, yeah. yeah. And um, two, we could put it on the signage, you know, maybe put up to X hours and, hours and for charging only. And, you know, you could put some information there that you want. We certainly, yeah. Yeah, signs, signs can do a lot of work for you. I see those all over the place. I'm sure. I'm going to charge more. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I personally think it's, you know, it's, I don't have electric vehicle, but I think it's something that, you know, at this point we probably should have or test out. It seems like it's a pretty reasonable price. Um, you know, some of these other ones we were talking about before, like a level one charger, I think they were what, five or six grand or something mm -hmm. like that to buy plus some installation costs. 
Um, so it sounds like this is more streamlined and easier for us to manage. Um, one thing I just kind of would like to just check the boxes before we did like spend our own $1,500 is if there was the opportunity to get $700 of grant money or whatever it is, at mm -hmm. least it's less money that we have to invest into it. And then, you know, and if we move forward with it, then, you know, it'd be nice to have like maybe a, you know, a twice a year check in like this is kind of how it's going, you know. Yeah. Education so only. If we're using that for education. Yeah, it could be part of. I had a nice conversation with Xander so about. Like you said, for the Forward Fest, we got people coming in with information, feedback from the community. Oh. Maybe we could use fifteen hundred dollars, that four thousand dollars. To do what? Like create a flyer? Okay, this is, this is He's talking about like buy the unit. Oh, oh, I, I guess I'd have to reread your grant to see you're not fishing in the scope. I, I don't know, I'd have to, you know, parse words. But I did talk to uh, Xander about a, about a mailer talking about, you know, a little bit more low-hanging fruit that's probably more practical for some people. And, and that would be a great place to announce your charger along with window dressers and just you know, where people can get fuel assistance. And you know, there's a state is doing a big, big push on heat pumps. I have heat pumps, I have a new house built airtight specifically for that. If I put a heat pump in this house, I'd break the bank in, in air in this building in, in, or in the office, the town office. We're just not prepared for it. Some people need to start with insulation and energy audits. And so I had talked to Xander about a use for your money. A, a partial use could be a mailer. We did one during COVID and on some like stock and it was actually helpful. People, you had information where you could go and, and you could announce your charger and things. But I would have to reread the minutia of your grant agreement because I do get audited. They don't just give us this money and walk away. I do get audited for grants. And uh, so, you know, they might come back and be like, well, you bought a charger, you know? So, but I'll look, I'm happy to look. I'll make a note, look at Merp Grant along with GMP and some funding. What does the board think in regards to, I guess, either, yeah, I, I guess, you know, either we would move forward, but also would like to check our grant opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if there is no grant opportunities, are we still willing to move forward with the cost, I guess? Do you want to look at, put it on the next agenda so we can actually, yeah. gives us yeah. a couple of weeks to look for some money, call mm -hmm. GMP and- We can do research as well. Give you yep. some, you know, at least try to give them, I mean, see what we can find. Yeah, yes, what sir. do you think about the electrical side of it? Is it feasible to utilize what's there? Well, it's already set up as a 240 plug. Is that the truth? I need to charge my car out there right now. I assume they have the breakers off so we don't steal that. But the people that actually charge them. Oh, we've had people park on Main Street and plug in. Is it a 240 outlet? <laughs> no, that's, that's what yeah, I'm wondering. So I don't know, Dave. There is one didn't, did you install it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Dave is an electrician and he installed that panel. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was asking him. <laughs> so that was, this is why, I mean, when, when I joined and a few of us joined last year, we all said, why is there no charger? It's ready for it. Right yeah. now, it's yeah. simple. Well, things have changed like everything else yeah. in development. Yeah, and yeah I don't. And the there definitely was and no option yeah, was of no like option a plug and play this. option. That was no, definitely yeah. not there before. No, we were looking to Any way you could uh, pipe. figure out how much of your time is going to be involved in this? Me? So wh whomever. Somebody's got to oh, reconcile um, these. Yeah, I, I, I'll have to talk to Pam about it. I mean, it's going to depend on if they pay monthly or how the money comes out. I don't know. Is that something I could, Pam could find on their website? So there's two different options mm -hmm. on there. But, okay. Um, and, and again, we would volunteer to help yeah, set it up and maintain it. Sure. Um, well, we, should, it just, uh, we can just... Like do the books. Yeah, we can just, uh, we could go online and see, I'm sure they have information on their website about it, and uh, to see if they pay just once a month, it's, you well, know, the money GMP's would come in, it would go in. I'm assuming GMP's going to pay for the usage, and then, 
I don't know. This app is going to reimburse you whatever funds that it collects from them. Do you know okay. how much the app is after but three yes. years? He said 200. He said less than 200 a year. Right. And again, I hope we have something a little bit more. I mean, the idea would be in three years that this is gone and we have We're better. We're talking about redoing this parking lot anyway by then, and so maybe. Yeah, we maybe were just talking about it today. What we do mm -hmm. then. And we're it, just and discussing it as we pulled in tonight <laughs> about another project that we were, it's got to happen sooner rather than later. And but Dave, you, you said there's Conduit already. already conduit, but you also explained to me that it depended what kind of charger as to what kind of conduit. So it wasn't, I just assumed conduit, I could put whatever I wanted, and Dave was like, no. That panel geez. is overhead. It doesn't have any conduit. That okay. panel is fed overhead, it's 100 amps. Okay. Okay. It's suitable for you maybe run. two of these, but the fast chargers would be. Uh, you could run one. one fast charger. Yeah, one. That's it. It doesn't even have three phase going there, so you couldn't do it. No. Fast charger. Because yeah, that was one thing we had talked about years ago was, you know, that we, the upgrades that would have to be not just here, but at the band shell to go to the level three overhead, but there's no, no three was significant. The in this town. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that's where kind of we but started you know. the spitball. You know, is it best the town? Like, we, you know, again, G, GW Plastic, well, at the time, no lotto now, but that was another location that we had talked about potentially like a partnership or. Um, or them just putting one there. Yeah. Because they were walkable to the day. Well, you know how it was kind of like the energy committee partnering with one of our business partners, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, help helping them out. Did you guys ever approach no lotto? So I think our big focus on this, you know, like no lotto is, is solid, but we're, we're not really look like for residents of Bethel who have an EV, GMP gives you a level two charger and you plug in the, and you just get it installed and you plug it in at home. And so no lotto, we didn't focus too much on that because we really were trying to come up with a solution that worked there because there was downtown businesses. I mean, the, I don't theoretically be like, park it in the lotto and then walk downtown. But like, yeah. unless we have something really specific in place that feels like a bit of a, of, of a stretch there. But we, yeah, when, when, we're, when we've talked more about the like long-term solutions, yeah, the lotto, the school, the band shell, like where are those places where, where you could have the, you know, like have you, you get something like Tesla where they require the, six uh, next to each other. That's a right. lot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what? Have you had a chat with a, uh, Convenience store up by McDonald's. They have two fast chargers. Oh, and Randolph, so, yeah. that, so yeah. you There's could have an idea of what, what's going on. The law school's got a couple. Most of the chargers up there are not very fast, extremely expensive, but yet very high demand because there's almost nothing between. I've, I've and driven by there, I've seen one car plugged in once. Oh, I see them used. All the time. I, work no, I, I mean, I would say this area with Airbnbs becoming a giant thing that, you know, they're coming into town and then they're like, well, we could go to Cockadoodle and get a pizza or the sandwich shop and we could plug in and charge because, you know, the Airbnbs don't have one. And, you know, that would be a, a big usage for it compared to, you know, I'm driving I see the down one, the hill to, yeah. to get I just something. See, I see the one at GMP simply. used quite often during the weekend. Like, you'll... It's kind of weird to see a family, they're plugged in at GMP and they're kind of like standing around yeah. like, what am I supposed to do now? But, <laughs> yeah, have a but there, There's always somebody oh, yeah. plugged in there. Um, I, law school's got a couple, right, I think? Five or six. Yeah. yeah. And they're I, all I powered with solar. Is that what it is, solar power? Yeah, that. I'm the, surprised the lotto hasn't put any in there. I'm surprised, too. For their employees. For yeah. Their employees. Well, the other thing, too, and just kind of spitballing it going forward anyways, is, you know, I would imagine at some point the school's going to, because the school district, the super, uh, supervisory union has three electric buses now. Now, those three electric buses do not serve Bethel or Royalton yet. They, they uh, one's in Chelsea, and one's in Tunbridge, and one serves Sharon, I think. Uh, they did that for a reason, just because the Royalton and Bethel buses typically have to do long hauls, where those are shorter ones, and they didn't know about accessibility in other regions of the state. But at, at some point, I'm assuming that they will get some here, and so it might be a good partnership, you know, if, 
if they're going to put one in to charge a bus, then maybe... That was a discussion yeah. we identified. We wanted yeah. to talk to Charge Vermont about saying if, if we put in faster chargers by the school, school buses could use them. Mm -hmm. And then they may, they may sit there overnight, but other people could use them. As, you know, and the schools a great location because there's, there's a lot of activity down the ball field, yeah. as we yeah. see on Sundays. That soccer camp that's going on, I mean, that thing is, you know, hundreds of people yeah, down there. Yeah, but you couldn't put one down there. No, no, at, I meant at the field. school. You can like it. But yeah, he's right. It's probably a better, I think that Josh is right, that yeah. it's a better candidate for a fast Yeah. Faster. Yeah. You kind of want slow so people will get pizza yeah. and so drink. Exactly. Cool. All right, I'll take a Go look. Dave. Without this being hardwired, has anybody thought about the exposure that we as the town of Bethel, because that's our panel. What so do you mean? So like like someone stealing it? I'm not worried about stealing. I'm worried about an idiot that doesn't know how to plug and unplug, has his hand in the wrong place, and just left you. When you're plugging it in. Well, we all have those, right? right? Everything behind the charger, so that will be plugged into the existing and outlet. And there will be no, way, no, no way anybody can touch it. Yeah, and it gets you locked. Put a, you put a padlock on the, you have, you have the outlet in the box there, and you lock that box so they cannot unplug that. Okay. Because right now, you know, just before the meeting, I opened up that box and then stick my fingers in the bus. Okay. <laughs> but if that box is open right now, I can look and plug in, and I'm assuming again you have the breaker turn. So we need to get a lock for the box. Actually, steal okay. the box. Yeah. Uh, mm. Once you put this into that plug, you would put a padlock on it. If you needed to use, I assume those were there for you know some kind of event. If you ever needed to use it for that, Ford Festival you can 30 years ago. <laughs> unplug it and plug in what you need for the event. Yeah. Right? Because it's pluggable. But you would want to lock the plug. That's why okay. you have that. That enclosure is already there. The ability to do that. You'd have to add five dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will. Um, we can swing. We'll just continue the discussion at the next yep. meeting while Therese looks at hopefully some funding can, opportunities. Yeah. But if not, we can make a decision at the next meeting on moving forward with the project yeah. with or without extra yeah. funds. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Can you see how long the turnaround is on getting something like this? And like, I don't believe it was any type of long-term thing. So. I think I saw it on Amazon. Yeah, they're so shipping on Amazon. Oh, okay. So get it pretty quick. Yeah. you can get it in a week <laughs> and you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But I, can, I already have a contact there. Right? I already spoke with them first to confirm yeah. it. So pretty quick then. Kind yeah. of <laughs> but it would be nice, I mean, definitely to have it up and running prior to Ford Fest, oh, yeah. things like that. Oh, yeah, no, I'd love that's really going to get you a good temperature. Charge, you know, yeah. The donkey. Exactly. <laughs> no, well, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to my contact at GW cool. and who knows, or not GW, excuse me, at, at GMP and uh, my G's mm -hmm. up at GMP and see and find out and look around. So Thank I'm you. happy to make a couple inquiries. I'll email you both and let you know. Well, thank you all thank so much thank for your you. time. Thank Have you. Have a good evening. Thanks for coming. I think you're down to other business. All right. So only thing we have left is just any other business to come before the board. And um, I had a meeting with Officer Sheriff Palmer and Looks like we're going to make a plan to move forward with what we're doing in town and how to kind of focus on what needs to be focused on and um, some public service. Yeah, I think we're going to move forward with maybe starting a neighborhood watch that can funnel <clears throat> things going on and then have a connection between that to uh, Sheriff Palmer directly to try to get on top of the issues all around town and have some sort of focus. I mean, they can only do so much. And right now we only have them for 24 hours, which is not much. It's something, but it's not much. Um, is that so what our new contract can, is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever we can do to help bridge that gap, uh, I'm going to be meeting with them again before the next meeting, and I'll have more to go off of then. And I mean, I think it's pretty easy to see that. What's that? Would it be additional hours or? No, because I mean, we can't just turn the budget around on it. But I think the next budget, we need to look at 40 to 48 hours. Yeah. To make it for them to be able to do what they need to do. I mean, you're asking them to do a lot with so little. 
Really? And they have been very good to us about using look at our ticket money, things like that. But, you know, we have some issues like other small towns, a lot of drug issues, you know, shooting going off in the middle of the night. We've had different uh, things. So, you know, if... Had break-ins and things like that. Yeah. They've had a lot of calls. I mean, yeah. it, it's been a yeah. lot. And, you know, they're only covering 24 hours. And yeah. How does it, um, how has it been with the, like, animal control piece of it? Have I haven't we, had any. Have haven't we had, had any? They've, they've went to those calls. Yeah. 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 But have we had to do many of those, or is it just... No, they had to investigate mm -hmm. one that I'm aware of, because I had talked to the health officer, but that's it, that I'm yeah, aware so of, good. but nothing really crazy. And, um, but yeah, so when, so Jordan, um, you know, it's a good idea. It's getting some information together in the next two weeks for the next packet, and talking to the sheriff's office, but it is something to think about, which is um, public safety from a different aspect is the concern should be something in the select board's mind at this point is, I don't want to use the word vigilantism, but it's people who are sick and tired of sick and tired about the stuff going on near their homes and, and doing things that maybe are going to put them in jeopardy. And it's not in one place. It's, it's yeah. the multiple spots. Yeah. The people around those spots are starting to get sick of waiting, and they're taking it in their own hands, and you have good people that are putting themselves in risk, jeopardy, dangerous situations because they've been trying for so long and there's no, no one's helping. Mm -hmm. And and the sheriffs are now here. We just entered the new 24 hours, but you know, how it, it, you have four different locations, 24 hours split up and then also being in town, it's, and then answering the calls at night or during the, so it, it gets eaten up quick. And he has, the sheriff had made contact with uh, the drug task force, um, so aware of some of the issues and, and spots and things. And so, you know, it would be interesting to see with a push from the entire community, people reporting things and giving information, even if it's anonymously in public service, and maybe people are going to realize that, hey, Bethel's, Bethel's saying enough as a community. And you no one know, has to stand out alone. If it's a neighborhood scared. watch, uh, yeah. You know, people can write in or send a message, and and then it can all be gathered up and brought to Sheriff Palmer, and then he can bring it down to the other employees and have a focus on making sure that everyone does know that it's can we put the lights on in here? It's, it's all oh. done. It's enough. <laughs> and. Take it somewhere else. Take the stealing, the thefts. They stole the trailer off Gilead. Yeah. 5 a.m., I think it was. And Where were you at, Brian? Did you let that happen up there? <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. They need to be policing up I there, thought you Ryan. had that down. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They located it. and uh, it, Sheriff's yeah. office? Mm -hmm. The sheriff's <laughs> office located it. The sheriff's it. office just did a, they made an arrest of Champlain for a warrant. Outstanding, yeah. Outstanding warrant on a female in New Hampshire, and I mean they're they're really doing what they can, but I think they need a little more help and they need a little more time. And I think the neighborhood watch thing. I mean, I remember growing up in a neighborhood that had neighborhood watch. You know, I mean, it's not a new concept. It's something's been yeah. out there, but it's something that seems like has not been very active in they a lot of towns for up. decades now. Yeah. yeah. Signs out on yeah. North Main Street. I don't know if that. Is. Yeah, I think this Scott. Yeah, at least get the signs as, up. Yeah, Scott as, used to be a part. Of, I remember right. him having yeah. a conversation. But I do but I think would, that a rejuvenation. Yeah. And it allows people to, you know, ask for help and funnel their information, and especially if they're getting plate numbers mm -hmm. and, you know, know people and see what's going on, identifying vehicles, then that's going to mm -hmm. help the sheriff's office too. So yeah, kind of like a tip line. Creating an email, you know. Having that be a point of contact for everyone to funnel in the the ongoings, you know, suspicious people around different houses, going down different streets, not belonging, thefts, vandalisms. Um, there's a lot of people that won't call it in, and I do know that calling in to dispatch is not always received nicely. I've had multiple complaints that they call dispatch, not the sheriffs directly, but 911, and it's just rude. Um, 
and, and you're calling for help and you're getting treated poorly and it's a terrible thing. It makes people not want to call and that's awful. And I would just say if we're going to work on some neighborhood watch that, I mean, a lot of times when we think of neighborhood watch, we think of like the more densely populated areas like, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, probably maybe just look at the different boroughs of the town and get people involved because we you know like for instance you know we've had some instances up in gilead yeah um there's been some instances up on Royalton hill road north road i mean uh, you know so it'd be nice to have like it's some everywhere. of the boroughs of the town maybe mm -hmm. have their and know, it could be community one, members that might want to be could be one large that. neighborhood watch and, and it could be I mean, you could have heads of each yeah yeah spot, like and leaders. then their neighbors are yeah you know hey by the way and then they report back to mm -hmm. the yeah, committee. That's, that's true because I got one night at 8 o'clock, you know, information, error, and we were sharing it all over my neighborhood because Good. there was somebody out there. Yeah, this is something that's we're going to move forward with. That, no, it's a great idea. That, I think so. it should be active in every town all the time. I mean, if there's a certain vehicle that's, you know, coming around corners and down on Main Street, a repeat offender, Bring it up and, and send it in to the email. It'll get to the sheriff and, you know. Of course, some of the issues we find nowadays is we know who the problem players are, but then it's the judicial system actually dealing with these individuals. Well, that's... The problem is sometimes you can't even catch them anymore. Like, they, there's so many regulations against, oh, it hasn't risen to this yeah. level. And then whenever it does rise to that level, they go away and they come right back. He's, you know, Kirk so it's is, like... I think Kirk is coming to the next meeting, and one of the things that the sheriff suggested we speak to him about is bail reform. Yeah. He's like, you know, yeah, you there's a tough. lot of legislation, but he said we need to talk I to him I think Dave about and I were going to sit and talk with Kirk, too. Oh, good. Just not in this form, but... No, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's great. great. All idea. the citizens that are now, well, we're just going to... You could start like a and, town committee, couldn't you? Like, well, that's like, what I was saying, Tim. Like you could start somebody. like a town yeah. committee for, yeah. Um, yeah. You could see how it goes and see if you end yeah. up getting somewhere. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah, that was my oh, piece. Hey, that's a roadside mower just texted me. <laughs> Tell you what he said, Brian. He says, uh, No Gilead. They're in Stockbridge now. I'll have Jerry get a hold of AJ. So, there you go. Sure. Couldn't be any more faster update than that. Does <laughs> yeah, so. that close it? Anything else coming before the board? Mm -hmm. If we don't have anything else, we're just going to enter into executive session. So I just need a motion to enter Second. executive session so we can discuss the evaluation of the town manager. Jordan. Moved by Is Jordan. There... <laughs> okay, Second. Jordan and Dave. Second by Denise. All in favor? Aye. All right.